Hey guys, I'm hanging out at the Electric Bicycle Center. I've got Sam, Kanika, Lisa, Lisa and Kenny, the, the whole gang here. We're hanging out, we're looking at a fun one. This is the Hard 4 4.0 from high bike. This is an Estero, it's got the Yamaha motor, nice big skid plate, suspension, bright yellow, some reflective accents here, including the labels on those tires. And that's because this is a kid's bike. It's like one of the few electric kid's bikes that I've ever seen, and, and this one's really amazing. I mean, when you, a lot of kid's bikes are cheaper, right? This has an air fork, it has hydraulic disc brakes, and we have Kanika here to ride it, because she's a little bit more petite. The sizing on this comes it's only one size, it's like 34 centimeters right here. And I, I mean, I'm trying to give you an, some idea. Yeah, look at Sam lifting this thing, look at this. That's perfect, that's perfect. And a big part of what makes it approachable for kids is that High Bike does this on a lot of their frames, but that sloping top tube, because the battery actually slides out the side, it doesn't have to come up like the Bosch batteries. And these are 24 inch tires. So 24 by 2.25. They're a little bit fatter. They've got good traction, good tread for going off road. You've got the comfort from the tires. Also that suspension fork. I think it's 63 millimeters of travel. You've got compression adjust and lockout. Air forks are nice because you can adjust, you can adjust like how, how full the air is, like how stiff they feel, the yeah. weight of the child. You know, children come in all different sizes. Um, I mean, I wish I'd had a bike like this when I was younger, just riding everywhere and getting excellent range. The mid drives are very, very efficient. So 36 volt, 11 amp hour battery and the motor, it's 250 watt nominal, but it puts out up to 80 Newton meters of torque. That's even more than the Bosch CX motor. Yamaha is known for that zero cadence, like immediate start. I find that the cadence RPM is a little bit lower than Bosch. It's up to 100 RPM versus 120. Um, it's something I talk about on the Estero versus Exduro, but you really only have Estero choice in this case. It's kind of like the full fat six from a uh, high bike, which only comes with the Estero Yamaha. Anyway, it's it's a great system, about 6.4 pounds on that battery pack, seven point something pounds on the motor, 44 pounds on the bike. And that is heavy for, for a kid's electric bike, right? You know, and kids yeah. not necessarily super strong. Yeah, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a level of bike that you can actually go out mountain biking with your kid. I've yeah. had dads come in and they'll get Junior this bike, uh, but it is governed. It only has a top speed. It doesn't go the full 20 miles an hour. Hmm. And after about a month, they're ready to upgrade and jump to the next bike uh, yeah. that has a little bit more uh, Did that happen? Speed. You were talking about yep. a customer kind of yep. came in with their kids. Yeah, and... they went to Chino Hills. And you know, when you're actually bombing down the hills, you want to have a quality bike, you know? Yeah. And kids, <laughs> you know, they're, they're riding their BMX bikes or whatever, but to go out mountain biking, you need you know, I mean, a kid's got endless energy. But when you get into serious mountain biking, Climbing. you need serious, you know, mid-drive power to climb that hill. So some of the other differences here, it's those 24 inch wheels that bring them down. Most full-size mountain bikes are 26, 27.5, 29, you know, that 24 brings the whole frame down closer to the ground. They're pretty strong here, 14 gauge spokes, reinforcement eyelets on those Alex rims. I mean, these are a lot of name brand stuff here. Shimano Acera, nine speeds on that rear sprocket. We've got an alloy bash guard on the chain ring, a plastic chain guide so you don't drop the chain. I mean, it's just internally it's a, routed cables. <laughs> you know what? I think the best way to say it is, Court, it's a high bike. It is, yeah. The, I mean, obviously, this is one of the higher end brands that are available, and it's priced as such. This is twenty five ninety nine. We're looking at a twenty sign of 2016, 2017 here. Yeah. Okay, so the price has been dropped a little bit. Tapered head tube. I mean, I could go on and on. We've even got it's it's reversed right now. The stem it's angled down to be a little bit more aggressive. Three ten millimeter stacks. I mentioned those hydraulic disc brakes before, and one of the benefits is you can actually bring in those levers a little bit. They're adjustable reach. So if your child has yeah smaller hands, um, can you put out your hands here, kind of? Yeah, <laughs> yes, right. Look at those. Yeah, it's good. you bring those levers in. Hundred and sixty millimeter rotors, front and rear, quick release wheels, so you can take the wheels off, the battery off, reduce a lot of weight. That seven point whatever, seven and a half pound um, battery pack. Actually, maybe that's six and a half pound. The motor is seven something. It's just, it's it's neat. It's neat to see this 31.6 millimeter seat post. So you could put a thud buster or body float on it and then create a full suspension feel, but that's gonna raise the seat height about three inches. So you see how low this is. We purposely did that just to kind of demonstrate. And I, I don't know, we're kind of having fun tinkering with this bike. I've, I've tried to hit a lot of the specs, the major specs. Maybe we can walk through and take the battery off real quick and just show how that works, Sam. Do you have, sure. the, do you have the keys or are hold, they in? Hold, hold. They're in my pocket. Oh, you got them. There we go, okay. So I got the keys here. Pop this in like that, twist it, 
and then it, look at that, it just slides out to the side. Love that, got a little loop on top, easy to carry around, quick to charge. I'm not a huge fan of the charger, it clicks right in. The charger that they give you, it's huge. It's almost as big as the bike, right? Like four amps, that's nice, because a lot of e-bike chargers are just two amps, but it's bulky, it's heavy. I just, I don't know, and it kind of it kind of twists in room for improvement. I've said that a bunch of times on the Enduro chargers, but you know, Yamaha, they make good stuff. I believe they offer a two-year comprehensive warranty on the- Correct. Right? The, so the, the charger's my biggest gripe too. Yeah. And next door at Giant, they've got their electric bikes and they're using Yamaha and they've got their own uh, battery charger. Uh, it's not the OEM from Yamaha. It's a proprietary giant. More it's compact. A much smaller compact charger, yeah. Yeah. Also, no kickstand. So, you know, your kid might be just tossing this on the side, but it should, it, and there's no kickstand. Was yeah. that where you were looking yeah. for? Yeah. The mounting Most points? Most all your high bikes will have that. I think it's because it's so short, your kickstand would be like, you know, four inches They might long, not even probably. make kickstands like that. You'd have to custom modify it. Slap guard, though, so you're going to keep the the frame in good condition. And that's that reflective accent on the side that I was talking about before. And just the high visibility colors. Uh, there's a lot to appreciate, those finer details. But coming back up, oh, plastic pedals here. They're decent though. They're relatively grippy, uh, probably strong enough for kids. Power this up. This is the LED console. So it's not quite as advanced as the LCD models. You don't get as much, but it's, it's one of the best LED consoles I've seen. You've got miles per hour. You can press the up or down and go to battery percentage, 80%. That's way better than just having, you know, five ticks, 20% increments. Having a percentage is a huge, a huge deal for me. And then that's range. So if we arrow up to the lowest level, Eco, it says 61 miles and that's in 80% battery. It's not even completely full. 40% yep. on standard and 33 miles on high. I said percent, but it was, yeah about 40 miles on standard that's awesome and then we've got a lights button I, it looks like it dims it sort of dims the brightness this bike doesn't have any lights integrated so it's not going to do anything but that the assist buttons are relatively easy to reach and i feel like the display is compact enough it even sort of swivels but i didn't see any there's no like usb ports or any extras like that on this no. one right so um, it's you know it's a pretty clean cockpit and hopefully if you did have an issue if if your child crashed the bike and this got busted up you could get a little a replacement and maybe plug it right in there. Uh, but the point being, they're pretty well made, pretty well designed. Yeah, not only uh, when I was talking with my rep, Brian, uh, not only were we discussing this as a child's bike, but if you've got someone under five foot, this yeah. would be an option you could look at as well from high bike. So, okay, so what what I was hoping to do, I'm gonna hop on this and ride by. And Sam, will you film me for a second? Sure, we can do that. I'm 5'9", I have like a 31 inseam. And then maybe we can put Kanika on it. How tall are you, Kanika? Five two. Five two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like we'll try to get an idea of how this looks. And then sure. maybe Sam will go on it at the end just in case it breaks. Uh, all right, <laughs> you if gonna you try insist, it? we'll give it as you go. These motors are so capable, like you can climb yeah. just amazingly well. Yes. Um, so make sure you're pointing at the right place. Wish me There we go, all right. Is he gonna curb hop it? There he goes. So you can see how high his knees are going there. along I want to show the uh, the motor and the sound Absolutely. okay so I'm gonna take it all the way up to up uh, let's see high and then accelerate I can't really even hear it and pretty quickly I'm above the max assisted speed so I'm up to like 12 miles per hour that's where it cuts out um, you know and and on flats it doesn't seem that fast but I think that's a safety thing The crank arms on this bike, that's the portion of metal that connects the bottom bracket to the pedals, they're 155 millimeters instead of 170. So they're shorter, like the whole bike is designed for someone who has shorter legs. And you know, in my case, my knees are like up in my, up in my chest almost. Um, but I think that's neat. Like the pedal rotation isn't going to get, you know, too far and create an imbalance for, for someone who's younger or just petite. Um, also that motor is listening for kind of a cadence rear wheel speed and pedal torque. So if I pedal gently, it's only just barely responding. And then I push harder when I need that power and it, it juices me right up to speed. It's pretty, 
it's pretty awesome that way. And then the fork, you know, it's feeling really good. It's, it's actually, maybe it's just air pressure right now, but it's set up for someone who doesn't weigh as much. Um, and it just, yeah, Let's see if we can do, it's gonna try no hands, but I don't know if I'm going fast enough. It's a little bit less stable because of the smaller diameter wheels. You wanna hop on, Kanika? Thank you so much, I like your helmet. There she goes. I think the seat's even a little low for her. Looking good. You come back and do a brake test? Nice. We maybe stand up over it. Yeah. Right yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah, she can actually stand over this pretty comfortably mm -hmm. and even sitting on the saddle feel stable. And when you're a kid, you're still getting the feel for a bike. Being able to put your put your feet down and create stability is a big deal. Yeah, do you have any comments on the bike? Just as I mean, you've tried a lot of these bigger bikes, yeah. right? Yeah, I love it. Does this one feel a little bit more comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, rides all right. We've ridden the bike around a little bit and I just wanted to get some feedback. Maybe, you know, everyone here has a different perspective. Um, Lisa, Kenny, what do you guys think on a bike like this? I think it's awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Just yeah if, I, if I had a kid, I don't have a kid, I have <laughs> animals, but yeah, I totally dig that. Yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty big outlay of money, but on the other hand, it's like, this is gonna last, it's no, not no, gonna it's, break. It's a piece of equipment that you'll take camping and, you know, and make a lot of memories with. Yeah, for sure. Sam, what do you think? You've, you've met well, people- Well, when I was 10 years old, my dad got me a YZ80, and I was down in uh, Palm Desert, so that was kind of the thing to do. This is like a modern version of a quiet way of getting out into those trails. Here in Orange County, we got Whiting Ranch, we got Holy Jim, we've got Chino Hills. These are all places to go and ride with uh, pops or your friends, you know. And this this will get you into areas where normally a kid of that age probably won't get that far in. As you get a little bit older, being teenage years, yeah, you got a little bit more power and you got the gearing to get you up into those hills. But this is going to help them and maybe get them started into the e-bike market. I was really impressed that it does have like a nine speed cassette and that might be, you know, there's a little bit of learning navigating through the power, but actually figuring out the trigger shifters and stuff like switching gears. Um, the Yamaha system doesn't have a torque detect. Well, I guess it's, it does measure your torque, but it doesn't have cadence and shift detection. Yeah, zero, zero cadence. So it just like right it's, as soon as you start touching on that crank arm, it's, it's powering up for you. But which means if someone's really pushing hard and shifting and mashing those gears, it could but, you know, yeah, but you know, when you're force. riding a mountain bike, you, you, you usually, even if it's a non-electric, you, you know when you're going to shift and you let off a little bit. That's just yeah. like an intuitive thing that you know when you're riding a bicycle. If you're experienced. Oh, right? right. So the point I'm getting at is, and maybe you can chime in on this, Bosch has like shift detection. And it's all it is, it's kind of like these little micro gaps in power output so that the chain can jump from different sprockets smoothly without mashing as much. Yamaha doesn't have that but it does measure torque. So if you're experienced, you know to ease off a little bit. They both seem similar to me. I mean, have you ever, how often are you like switching chains and helping people with derail your issues on stuff? It's not a big issue. I had a yeah. couple that went across country and did uh, 4,800 miles and we changed their sprockets and chained after an epic 58 you know, day uh, cross country ride yeah. on some Bosch powered bikes. But, um, I haven't really, uh, I can think of one or two other customers we've had issues with chains and sprockets and we've had, and they start to, you, you'll know because they'll still be louder. They'll start making yeah. more noise you when they're like wearing a tune out. kind of, yeah. right? Well, it's this changing was more, more than a tune-up? Yeah, it's, okay. we were having to change stuff out to try to troubleshoot where that noise was coming from and it was the drivetrain, you know, okay. uh, chain and sprockets. I'm gonna defer to Chris. He's probably a little bit more knowledgeable on the. Uh... Chris, this Chris is from Erad, and uh, you guys have a number. You have Smart Motion, and we distribute some brands, and then we also on the retail side sell High Bike and some other brands. So you do have some experience with this, mm -hmm. and I mean, what do you think about the Yamaha system versus like a Bosch or well, you know, you guys? I mean, first let me say that I started riding bikes when I was 10 and started racing a few years later, and it shaped my life. Big mountain bike trails are overwhelming for small children, for children 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. But this would give them an opportunity, like you said, to go out with dad, go further out there and be able to experience mountain biking. I, I they didn't really, mountain biking wasn't really a thing when I started, but as soon as it became a thing in the late 80s, 
I got on it and never went back. So I love to see the opportunity to see younger children try mountain biking as an option. And um, keep as, up. Yeah. yeah. As far as the Yamaha and the Bosch motor, my experience is that the Bosch likes to be in a lower gear, spinning faster at a higher cadence, and that's kind of where the power band is. Yeah. And on the Yamaha, it likes to be in a higher gear, mashing a little more. Um, road cyclists tend to grab people that tend to do cross-country racing or ride road tend to gravitate towards the Bosch. Yeah, that's on the me. Yamaha yeah. is more of a the hardcore mountain biker, the enduro rider, the more aggressive rider, that and the, and motocross riders. People like to stand are used to standing up, and pushing hard on the pedals. Yeah. So that that'd be my take. I think they're both fantastic motors. Um, but they definitely appeal to different riders and there's a motor for each type of rider. Very well said. Thank you. I mean, that was, I, I'm, I'm actually really stoked to hear that. Just, I don't know. I thought it'd be fun to get people, people's opinion. Cause this is sort of a special one, but yeah, thank you, Chris, for the, you're welcome for the feedback. Um, so we're finishing up here and Sam had a few pieces of information to add. What were you saying? So there's limited numbers of these that they brought in. They brought in a very, uh, limited number for 2017. So yeah. there are not that many of those, these bikes, uh, available in the U S I think they're just testing the market here in the US and North America to see how the sales go for a kid's bike from high bike. I'm sure they have more in Europe and in different styles. This is the only one available here. And again, it's limited numbers. Huh, okay. And you were talking about the kickstand. You thought yeah, you could does. actually? Yeah, so you can put a kickstand on it. Uh, there's a bracket back here on the back. Uh, it's on this side right here. Is it this? So you put a bracket in here and that will hang down and then you put your kickstand off that. So you can install a kickstand on it. Okay. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, with with a lot of this stuff here here's the charging port on the side of the battery by the way it's a little plug and you can kind of click in there and then um, turn that you can charge it with the same you don't need a dongle or anything so whether it's on or off the bike i want to add one other thing to uh court we sell about 10 12 yamahas for every bosch huh. powered high bike and i have never once i repeat i have never once had it work on a yamaha ever Huh. Very they reliable They seem to motor. be very reliable, almost bulletproof. Um, Bosch, I've had to work on a, 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 a few times. Really? But on the Yamaha, I've never had to work on it. Okay. So when I give the nod to Yamaha as far as reliability goes. I've never had to clear an error code, yeah. nothing. They're rock solid. This is a great platform. That's great feedback. And you know, there, there's always this exchange and I sort of have my, it's the cadence thing. I think Chris really nailed it. I like a higher cadence yeah. and there are a couple times where I just I, in testing, I'm out there and I'm pedaling and try, I'm trying to test it. And there is a little bit of a lower RPM thing um, going on here, but it, it is a higher torque rating. So there, you know, it works well. I think for 98% of the people out there, it's kind of this, a similar experience. Yeah. Um, anyway, thanks, Sam. You I got appreciate it, the insights. Well, guys, I think that's about it. I'll have all the specs and stuff back at the website, the measurements. Um, it's, it's good to know, like how long, how he's lifting it up again how, how what's the standover height what's the seat post like i try to get all that info for you uh have fun out there great job high bike making this thing safe with the bright colors oh yeah for the kids ride safe